Hey everyone, it's Bosco Falk here, and um, today what I thought I would do is show you guys another one of my hobbies, which is my wine collection. I've been collecting wine for about 20-25 years now, and um, I thought I'd show you my uh, little collection that, that I have. Um, cigars down on the left and a little bit on the top as well. Um, so it's really, I call it a cellar, but it's really quite small. It's a room that's maybe 16 feet long by, um, what do we got here? Probably about five feet wide. And I can get about 1200 bottles of wine in here, about a thousand bottles right now. And um, I've got a little alcove here, which I put in with a little sink and a little cupboard. And then behind me here is um, a little bit more of um, some some more racking over here and then up top here is my little, little air conditioning unit so fairly small room when I built the room what I did was I had extra um, extra insulation put in the walls I also had uh, plastic insulation put in the walls to try and trap as much of the of the cold air in the room as I possibly could um, and then down here what I did is I did some weather stripping on the on the solid door that I did that I put in place here. So uh, a weather strip bar at the bottom to, um, and actually all the way around the inside of the door. Just your regular weather stripping that you put on an external door to keep, again, all the cold air in. And I, I tend to keep my cellar at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit as opposed to the 56. Just, um, I find that it's a, it's a, little, it's a little better. Um, and that's kind of how I like to keep it. So. My collection is down at around a thousand bottles now. Um, at one point I was way higher, but really my wine collection is less about investment and more about consumption. I do, I would like to taste almost every bottle of wine in my lifetime um, in the cellar. And so I really don't buy that much wine anymore. I'm now waiting for, um, for what I have in the cellar to, to get to a certain age and um, uh, get to the right age and then, and, um, start drinking the stuff as opposed to keeping it forever and trying to sell one day which is not my intention so i've been slowly drank drinking through the collection of the last few years i really don't consume that much and probably i'm lucky to open a bottle or two a month uh, i just can't get to it and um, with work and kids and family and, and and the whole bit it's difficult to kind of get to it all um, i do here firstly i'll get you know i'll get the empties later on some of the greater bottles that i've that i've had in my collection and, and drunk through them i'll start over here one of my greatest loves is Napa Valley, um, and I, I'm trying to specialize now in what I have, and I'm building a few, trying to build up a few 10-year verticals. Um, so I got Shape is one of my favorite wineries. I've visited the estate a number of times. Um, Hillside Select is, if I was stranded on an island and with one bottle of wine, it would most likely be Hillside Select by Shaper. The Old Sunspot Vineyard, um, and I've been drinking that for many, many years really love the wine um, and I'm trying now I, I kind of stopped buying for about six or seven years and so my collection has really started from 05s onwards I've got a huge you know collection of my six or sevens eight nines tens eleven twelve thirteen so my, my collection because I stopped collecting for about ten years um, and I only started up about sort of you know ten years ago um, wine collection is still pretty young so with my Schaefer's I've got the Hillside Select I've got uh, 08s going all the way up to the 13s. I'm about to buy the 14. What you'll notice with me is I'll typically buy wines in threes. Um, and there's a reason for that. If it's very expensive, like, you know, some of the, um, some of the wines, for example, I've got my, um, I've got my Dominus's over here and I'll buy them two at a time. You know, they're now around $400 a bottle. And so um, I'll buy two of those. I'd like to be able to buy three, but you know, it's a little, Expensive sometimes I will like on my hillside selects, which I really love I will in, in a good year. I will actually end up buying um, I will end up actually buying threes, but the reason I buy three is I try and have something I, I'll try and get the first bottle around seven to ten years um, Get a sense of where the wine's going have another bot another bottle two or three years later and try and time the last bottle or potentially the second the second and third bottles at the perfect um, at the perfect age uh, so, and it's, it's just fun for me to watch the wines evolve. So if I take a bit of a closer look at what I, what I have here, again, going back to my, my Schaefer's, 
I got some of the 1.5s which are pretty good too. Shafer is really something I love. So I now have, um, with a 14 that's about to come to me, I have seven years of my 10 year vertical. I'm trying to build a 10 year vertical in a number of different bottles and I'll, I'll highlight some of those. I've just started on the, the Dominus's. Again, you know, Dominus is a long term thing. A lot of these wines are long term things. I really wouldn't drink them less than about 10 years old. Most of the stuff that I have here in the cellar, typically at 10 years is when I'm drinking the wine and onwards. Um, Camus, I've got some Camus here starting from 09. Uh, one or two vintages I have, uh, like one year, I don't have the 2010, but I'm building a 10 year vertical on that too. And then I've got some interesting things just down there, some form and some cake bread. Um, then going back to the top again, I've got a mix of here. So the, these first sort of three racks are, um, Calif are, are really um, US wines. Uh, I love Napa Valley and Washington State and um, um, Napa, actually California too, Monte Bridge Montebello. Um, I've, got a, I've got a little bit of Montebello, which I really do enjoy. Um, I've got a couple of vintages there and I've got a few bottles up here. And uh, my insignias, which I've just started collecting. I've already got a little bit of Colcida Creek left, 100 pointers over there, some Chapelet, the, the Pritchard Hill, which is a wonderful wine, and of course, some um, Cape Vintners, the Power Wine Syrah, which, which is another great wine. So moving down here, um, Philip Togni, um, that's an estate that I've, that I've been to, um, and I've had the pleasure of being able to meet Brigitte and Philip Togni and, and, and walk through their cellar together and just walk me through their wines and actually taste out of the barrel. Togging is a phenomenal wine. Um, then I've got some done, and then moving down to some other things here. I've got a bit of um, Washington State wines. Um, back to, I've got, so I'm not, I don't have it in, in really a, a, a perfect order here, um, but um, I, I guess I need to clean that up a little bit at some point. Then moving to some of them, the Italians, I really do, that's another area that I love. So Napa Valley, Washington State, Northern California, and moving to Italy, I'm a huge fan of Super Tuscans. Tignanilla is one of my favorites. Um, and I'm building a, um, I'm, I'm building a, a, trying to build a 10 year vertical of that. Just picked up the 2015, which gives me also uh, seven vintages so far in, in terms of that. Um, Sasakaya, I wouldn't say I'm building a 10 year vertical, but I, I, I do like Sasakaya and I'll get it every now and again. Gaia is another one of my favorites, particularly the Spurs, which I enjoy. I've got a couple bottles of that. Again, an expensive wine. And so I only have two of those. My favorite Italian Italians would be the Ornolais, Um And I typically do buy those in threes because I really love the stuff. I started with a 2010, of which I actually only had bought two bottles at the time. And I'm building, again, I'm building a 10 year vertical of that. And I uh, just, I just acquired uh, some of the 2014. So um, I've got a, what, what gives, that gives me about five, five vintages. A um, little bit of Salaya on the top. Um, I mentioned the Tignanello, and I do love the Tig, um, but moving across here, what I, what I actually really love is the Guido Altasso, which is another sort of on the same level as Tig, maybe even a little bit nicer. I don't have a lot of it, um, three bottles of each, but I have the 09 and the 2012, which are particularly nice vintages. Um, and then I've got, you know, I've got odds and ends, a bit of Arcanum over there, a um, bit of odds and ends of, of Italians. I do also love Brunello's. And I've got a bunch of the 06s and 07s in the Brunellos. I'm not a huge Barolo fan. It's a long, longer term investment, but I do like Elio Grasso's um, uh, the Genesta Casamata. Um, and so I've got a couple of, I've got one or two Brunellos here and there. Um, but I, you know, in terms of the more sort of old world style of Italian wine, I, I tend to lean more towards the Brunellos than, than, the, than the Barolos. Moving back to my sink over here, I do have um, I do have a nice Magnum of twenty ten, but again, you know, longer term investment. It'll take a look, it'll take a while before those are ready. Um, I have a nice selection of South African wines too. Uh, fairly large selection of South African wines. A couple of special things here and there. Um, Bayes Kloof. I've met Bayes Truter, who's actually the one maker at Bayes Kloof, and um, I really do like his wines. The Lima, the Mint. The cabs are incredible, and the mint, which is a, a menthol flavor, it has a bit of menthol as a result of the, of the nearby eucalyptus, eucalyptus trees that are close to the particular vintage that produces um, this particular cab from uh, Giles Webb's estate, the Lima. Um, I'm building it at, uh, again, a 10 year vertical with the Deturin Fusion 5s. Um, those are another one I really enjoy. 
Um, I actually need to get the 14 and 15 vintages. Uh, Glen Carlo Grand Classique, which I actually drink as a student. I'm building a 10-year vertical of that as well. Um, and the other one I really like from South Africa is uh, Hamilton Russell Chardonnays. And uh, I've got about six bottles and the 2017 is on its way to me now. So I've actually got seven vintages of that so far and I'm trying to build again a 10-year vertical on that one. Um, some more interesting South African wines. Um, Rosten Fried is always a big, uh, a big joy of mine. And of course, Mierlust. I've got a few vintages of Mierlust, not too much of that. A little bit harder to come by here in North America. Um, and then actually, while we're talking about South Africa, I'll, I'll, I'll move over to, just, I do like, from a white point of view, I'm not, uh, while I enjoy Chardonnay, I particularly love um, dessert wines, uh, botrytis infected dessert wines. Um, I love Sauternes and Balsache, and I have some of the, those here, which I've been collecting over the years. Um, as you can see, you know, when you buy, when you buy the current vintage, if I look at the 2014 Rio Sec, it's a very light straw color. And then if I had to turn over here to a 1989 Chateau Sudorat, you can see that um, the color changes to almost a dark toffee-like uh, color in nature. And then the, the flavors move towards these very sweet um, glazed sort of, you know, um, tangerine, oranges, things like that. Um, dessert pineapples, glazed pineapples, things like that. And I really love that about um, the dessert wines. Um, and the other one I also really do enjoy is South African dessert wine. So I've got a bunch of those over here, something from the Niederberg Wine Auction, Edelkure, which is one of the, probably one of the very first dessert wines that came out of South Africa. Some one-offs from Plain Constantia, which is this 2008 um, Ryan Riesling. Um, they only made one year of that, 2006, sorry, only made one year of that. Um, and then some Paul Kluver, which was white wine of the year in 2013, I believe it was. I was able to, which is the dessert one. I was able to snag a few bottles of that. The Buttsberg as well, which is a big award winner. And then of course some Takai. I really do enjoy Takai. Um, the other thing that's I'd say quite special is um, from South Africa, which is the Klein Constantia Vin de Constance. I have three or four vintages, different vintages of this. It's incredible stuff. Goes forever. Um, Nelson Mandela, who's a teetotaler, never drank alcohol, actually used to partake in a bit of Vinda Constance, was the only thing he would drink every now and again on a special occasion. And it's believed that Napoleon Bonaparte used to order this from the Klein Constantia Winery in South Africa. Um, and it have been, have been around, being that Klein Constantia has been around for centuries, um, it, was, it was still around when, when Bonaparte was doing his thing. Um, so, so that's the, um, so that's some of the dessert wines, which I really like. And then I've got, um, a few odds and ends. I really like Chateau Neuf de Pape. Um, and, uh, I have a bunch of that in my collection. Some, some, it's really the Southern Rhone wines that I enjoy. Huge fan of Southern Rhone wines, the Grenache, Montverde, Syrah. Um, I really like that out of France. I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a big fan of Bordeaux and, and um, Burgundy, fortunately for the pocketbook but huge fan of Southern Rhone when it comes to red wine and out of France. Um, some British Columbia wines, probably my favorite wine from British Columbia, is either the Nota Bene or Road 13, particularly for the fifth element. Um, and then I really do enjoy Chilean wines. Another, moving quickly now to Australia, to try and keep this video a bit short, Almond Ra is a big fan of mine, I'm, and I'm trying to build a 10-year vertical of that. Um, and then I do like Montez Alpha's M, which is their flagship um, blended wine. And of course, Don Melkor um, is um, is a big is a big uh, uh, enjoyment of mine. I'm again, I'm trying to build a, a ten year vertical. I have the 2015 on its way, so that should give me about six vintages, um, and then various odds and ends over here. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you know my my collection is for consumption. It's not for investment. I, I do actually plan on drinking all of this in my lifetime. Uh, I, you know, I stopped collecting for a while, as I said, about, for about 10 years, and I allowed some of my older stuff to get to mature, and we drank a ton of it, some really good stuff we had. Some, I just kept bottles on the more special stuff. 99 Macedo, which, I, which was phenomenal. Um, a couple of bottles of Grange. In particular, I had a side-by-side. -side. I had a bottle of 95 Grange and a bottle of 95 Hill of Grace, Henschke, which were outstanding. We had the two side-by-side -side at dinner. 
and then I had a, a few bottles of 89 Richborg, which I drank, and if I'd known that they'd be auctioned off at around $20,000 a bottle today, I, I likely would have not drunk, and then I probably would have sold that and paid for the whole seller. So I had three bottles of that, which was, yeah, we enjoyed it, it was good. Again, some of my Schaefer 96 was a particularly enjoyable year for me. When it comes to Schaefer Hillside Select, and I had a few bottles of that. That's the last bottle of Colgan's Herb Lamb uh, Vineyard, the, the 01, which we had, which was great. Um, some Harlan, some of my older Gaias, uh, Barbaresco. I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I've got a couple of Contessas, which is um, which uh, were fantastic. Some of the later 90s. Another one which I which I would, would, it was a it was just an award for me. I had some wonderful one. It was the 85 Heights, that incredible menthol. From again, similar to what I'm said about the mint in, in Thelema, those eucalyptus trees near the vineyard imparted some of that flavor over to the to the heights, uh, to the Martha's Vineyard estate. And that 85 Heights is, is just, you know, well known for that incredible flavor, which Anna was even all the years later. And uh, one of the first bottles that did it for me was the Celaya, the 1988 Celaya. One of the, I think that's one of the first vintages of Celaya. It was an incredible bottle of wine and I really enjoyed that. And then, you know, some of the older dessert ones, which we had at 20, 30, 40 years old, which was wonderful. An older bottle of Gaia, um, the um, Gaia and Ray, which is, I think it's his wife and daughter, uh, which, is the, which is what the Chardonnay is um, made, uh, named for. So anyhow, guys, that's, that's, uh, that's just some of the, the stuff that I have. This is a little hobby of mine. I really enjoy coming into the cellar. Some of the wines I've had, you know, I bought 10 years ago, and when you open a bottle of wine, that you bought 10, 15 years ago, waiting for it to all mature. It's quite a treat to open the bottle and um, and um, and taste it. Also, actually, even before I leave you guys, this is the most expensive bottle of alcohol I've ever purchased. It's a six-liter bottle of Cristal. It was the 2000, and I believe it was the. I can't remember the. Uh, I think it was the 2000 vintage. Uh, it, it all works a little differently. It's not exactly as it appears in the bottle, but we paid about forty-four thousand US dollars for this. It was a business uh, function where we, where we ordered this, where we ordered this, and it was in Las Vegas. They were nice enough to ship the the coffin that comes in and the empty bottle to me here, and I'll keep it as sort of as a keepsake in my wine cellar. A couple of other little things on the side, a couple of really good little bottles of wine that I'm looking forward to. Of course, partaking in one day. So thanks everyone, and um, hope you enjoyed this. Hope this was interesting for you. Um, please subscribe and leave me any comments. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if it sucked. And I look forward to more videos. Bye.